Hello, Mrs. Williams. Hello, Mr. Williams. What's going on? Uh, we have a package. We, we have a package? We have a package. Excellent. It's from our friends at Sway Candles. All right. We're doing a Hiking My Feelings signature scented candle. Oh, really? We are. Said, hope you all are staying safe and healthy. I blended these two candles. Let me know what you think, and we can make some adjustments. So what's the, what the, how'd this come about? Well, um, like the, the scented candle? Well, the relationship with Sway oh, okay. and what what's the what what spurred this? Yeah, so we um, Sway Candles is based in Carlsbad, California. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, by local, yeah. and it's uh, veteran owned and operated, and they sent us some candles um, uh, when we first got back from the tour, and they smelled amazing. They just follow us on Instagram. They like what we're doing. They're like, hey, keep spreading the good vibes. Here's some nice candles. And I was like, uh, could we get a Hiking My Feelings candle that smells like you're hiking? And he was like, what does that smell like? Like balls? And I was like, no, it smells like the woods and deliciousness. So um, for our donors, for a thank you package, we decided for our virtual campfire event that we want to send them candles. So if they're stuck inside and they don't have a campfire, at least they have a little candle campfire and it smells like you're hiking. So we've got two scents. Um, this is Fur, Driftwood, Sea Mist, and Tides. Oh, damn. Well, you want to smell it? They're smelling it through the oh, thing. Oh, can you smell it through the thing? <laughs> Lovely. And then this one is patchouli, fur, and sea mist. Oh, these are both really nice. You want to smell that one? There you go. Smell-o-vision. Smell-o-vision. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so... And then they sent us a Gorilla Glue one. <laughs> so I'm going to smell that. Smell that. Yep. That smells good. All right, cool. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to burn these and see which one we like better. And then that's going to be our signature scent. See if we want to make any shifts or changes. And then those will be going out to our donors during the virtual campfire event. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Who thought of that idea? I did. That's smart. <laughs> no wonder you're in charge. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. All right. All right, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute everybody. There we go, perfect. And I'm gonna get started. So um, chapter 15 is called Embrace Your Stink. Embrace, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Embrace Your Stink. So if you're reading along, we are on chapter 193. And to set this up, if it's been a while since you read the whole book, um, the previous chapter we were going from uh, Blackjack Campground into Little Harbor. And then we had our day off in Little Harbor where we had, uh, I had my GoPro selfie moment where I realized that like life doesn't change once you get a thigh gap because that shit don't matter. Um, I wrote a pretty big journal entry in that chapter. And then um, at the end of it, we were just like having a petting zoo at our campground in Little Harbor. So it was a pretty chill chapter. Um, this one I will say is a little bit uh, heavy on the body image stuff. So if that's something that you've been dealing with, what I'd like for you to do, um, if you're following along in the hard copy or if you have a notebook, if at any point during anything that I'm sharing today, you feel something in your body or a memory is triggered, like write down in the margins or write down on a piece of paper. And I want to like start paying attention to the things that are coming up for us, especially as we get into these last chapters, because this is where the insights are just like, I'm drinking from a fire hose on this island at this point. Like I am working through stuff so fast and it's all coming at me and I'm just like doing it. And I want to preface this by saying when I set out to like leave Little Harbor and go to Two Harbors, I didn't have this process in mind. So over the course of this uh, chapter, I'm going to tell you about how I embraced my stink, how I worked through this stuff. And the reflection or the extra resources for this chapter really start to dive into the how and the process of it. And I broke it down into four steps. So um, today's call might run a little bit longer depending on how everybody wants to share um, or how much everybody wants to share and just how we move through this stuff. But at the offset, if at any point while I'm reading you feel something like triggering or you feel something in your body, like you get a pit in your stomach or it feels heavy on your chest or whatever, just write that down. If you think of a memory of like when you experience something similar to what I'm about to read, write it down. And then before we jump into the resources, we'll start sharing that and then I'll dig into the resources and we'll um, go through the process of actually like embracing our sink some of it today. So um, page 193, chapter 15, here we go. <clears throat> one, 
one, the standard of beauty in America, when we were growing up, and you're a little bit older than I am, but even more so then, when we were, when I was growing up and before I was growing up, it was long, thin, blonde, straight hair. Like that was the beauty standard. That was the picture perfect version of an American woman. And she was usually small and thin and quiet and she kept to herself and she didn't rock the boat. And P.S., you and I, and basically everybody on this call, we are none of that, right? Like I don't give a shit like but like none of us are here to be quiet none of us are here to be small none of us are here to be meek and coy and be like this big regardless of what our body looks like so like emotionally spiritually we should be taking up the space second for me I thought when I straightened my hair it made my fat face look skinny and when I wore my hair naturally it made my fat face look fat so in my mind if I had straight hair, I wasn't fat because my face didn't look fat. Never mind that my face was just fat and it actually had nothing to do with what my hair looked like. I just had a fat face, which PS is fine. It is okay to have a fat face. Nobody worth a shit is not gonna love you because your face is fat. So like the standards that we hold ourselves to and the kind of people we like try to shrink to like get these guys or get these women or get these humans to love us because that's the standard we think we need to fix that's crap and like it took me 33 years to realize that it takes other people 70 years to realize that some people die and never realize that like my grandmother god bless her she was blonde and tan and wore lipstick and all pink until the day she died and she was 94 or 97 years old when she died like she was hair and curlers every morning like that's the world she grew up in you know like that was what it was like you were the housewife and you kept yourself looking nice to make your man happy and it's like well sh god forbid you ever had a dream for yourself you know so when you said that i was like oh god i god i wish you saw this talk in person because i was like she would have been like hooping and hollering like there's nothing wrong with how our hair naturally looks and the thing the matter of it is is like and the thing that i take to heart now is like my boss in that moment was like, we have clients in the building. And did she say your hair looks like you need to fix it? No, but the hair was the thing that was different that day versus every other day I had been to work. Like my dress was a various states of business casual, toe in the line on casual. They weren't sweatpants, but they weren't not sweatpants. Like that's kind of my deal. Um, but like, it doesn't, matter like how I do how I wear my hair does not impact how I do my job how I wear my hair does not impact how I treat other humans how I wear my hair does not make me more or less of a woman so like the whole thing is garbage and I'm so thankful that you shared that so thank you I love you very much and you're pretty and I love your natural hair so wear it like that please and thank you let me know if you need product Rex. <laughs> step number one is identify the stink what makes you you call the thing a thing so for me that was my thumbs my hair my tattoos and there's more like there's parts of my personality and other parts of my body that make me me but those are the big three um step number two acknowledge why you've been dulling shrinking or hiding this part of your mind body your spirit so i personally straighten my hair because i watch shows like the hills and the oc and in those shows those girls had long straight hair and i thought that was my ticket to like getting a man getting a job and having a healthy life healthy life <coughs> and then step number three replay the memory that confirmed that you should dull your shine if you have one of those so for me that was I knew that I dulled my shine or I knew that I was straightening my hair and I was trying to meet the standard of beauty that for me was set forth by the hills and the OC and the sick circumstance that confirmed in my mind that I should continue doing that was when I showed up at work and my hair was natural and my boss was like what are we doing here there's clients in the building so I internalized that I needed to have my hair straight to keep my job so then step number four is be your own hype man and reclaim that part of your mind body or spirit so first of all and most importantly I love my wavy hair like it's easier to manage I feel beautiful when I wear it this way and when I think about the times that I wore my hair with confidence in this state it was when I was on the rowing team at the University of Kansas like my team photo I have curly hair when I started skydiving my a license photo I have curly hair when <coughs> When I was on that mountain, I had been on the trail for four days. I had been in and out of the water. My hair was starting to have its natural texture come back and I loved it. So first and foremost, I love it for me because it's easy and I like it. And then once you like claim it for yourself, then like let your inner Flava Flav back you up and be like, listen, people would pay good money for that shit. 
right? Like hype yourself up, be your own best hype man. And the process isn't easy because a lot of these things are things that we didn't even realize that we believed and we didn't realize that we had a choice to believe it. Because like the first, and it depends on which scientist you talk to, but like the first seven, nine, 12 years of your life, you're a sponge. Like you are at the mercy of the house that you're growing up in, the education system that you are entered into, babysitters, immediate family, extended family. Like you are a byproduct of the people you surround yourself with. So you don't really have a choice for those first however many years because you, you're just absorbing and learning how to be a human who can talk and walk and like wipe their own butt, right? So once we get into those memories, it can be really, really earth rocking because these are things that like as true as my skin is white and my hair is currently blonde, I also have these thumbs or I also feel intrinsically unworthy unless I straighten my hair. Like these are things that are just facts in our brains so it's not going to be an easy process but the process is simple it is simple in that it's only four steps but those steps themselves can be difficult um and one of the things to keep in mind as we're um looking into this is like if you're able to give yourself compassion this process can be one of the most beautiful processes that you've ever been through in your life if you're still judging yourself and holding yourself accountable to these standards that you don't even agree with anymore this process may cause more harm than good so before you even get started on digging into this stuff like be really honest with yourself about where you're at if you are still looking in the mirror and you're like girl you're sick in a gross way like you don't like how you look and you haven't gotten around to the part where you're like I realize that I feel like this and I'm ready to change it like if you're still stuck in I feel gross and disgusting and that's how I talk to myself then maybe you're not ready to do this part of this work yet. But if you are sitting there and you're like, you know what, I'm tired of talking to myself, I'm tired of being my own worst enemy, then dig in because this is the stuff that's gonna help you free yourself from the lies that you've been telling yourself. Okay, well, yay. So thank you everybody for being here. Uh, this was awesome. <laughs> Thanks for sharing all your stuff. Um, and if anybody has anything else to share today, I would love to chat. And if not, then I will wish you all a happy Sunday because I know we are cutting into your Sunday. So up to you. Let me know. I am here if you want to chat. So how was that? Really good. Yeah, it was, huh? The best. That was a pretty, pretty heavy chapter. That was a good one. Yeah. I really liked that. A lot of good involvement. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm. That was exact. That's what I wanted it to be like this whole time. And I just didn't set us up for it to be possible, but I'm getting good practice before Blaze Your Own Trail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be so like, this is going to be life changing shit. It already is. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yay. All right then. Happy Sunday. Yeah. Happy Sunday. Woo! <laughs> Where are we? Potentially at the Hiking My Feelings Retreat Center 1.0. Ground zero. Ground zero. For Hiking My Feelings. Yeah. Yeah. God, that feels cool to say. <laughs> so this is one of the locations where we may actually set up the geodesic dome. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do a geodesic dome um, as the first part of the retreat center. So we'll have like community loungy space and then we'll have some room for tents for people that want to come out and do retreats here. Um, and then as we raise money to build a bigger place, then this will just be a nice place for us to stay when we're not at the retreat center. But um, yeah. This is the this is potentially where it's all gonna begin. Excellent. We're gonna go check out a couple other spots. But yeah. We're, we're trying to take into consideration winds, which direction the winds come from, because yeah. we had 107 mile an hour winds here. Yeah. Um and uh, 4G, so we can at least get some work done. Yeah. <laughs> that too. Things like that, right? <laughs> yeah. So we got full full 4G here. There's no Wi-Fi here currently, but it's just over the hill, so I think we could probably get some um, with a repeater or something. And this. This particular location is kind of sheltered by the hills so there's a little bit of like wind blockage here which yeah. is nice yeah yeah but this view doesn't suck i could wake up to this every morning and be totally fine with that uh-huh yeah so uh you put out feelers the other day for to get people to put out good vibes uh to get some people involved in this virtual campfire how'd that turn out good so yeah i had uh i swung for the fences and invited everybody I would ever want to ever show up, regardless of whether or not I thought I could actually make that happen. Um, and then I posted in the Facebook group, I was like, okay, here's who I want. I want Danielle Laporte, I want Dr. Nicole LaPera, I want so-and-so, such-and-such, da-da-da. 
And so it's like, pray on it, manifest it, whatever you get into, like put your good energy towards it. And then that night, Natalie Rise confirmed, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So Natalie Rise is gonna be one of the musicians at the virtual campfire. Um, we've got Brendan Clemente. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from Nathan from Ayaterra, Kaleo and Melanie, obviously. Um, I reached out to uh, K Bong from Stick Figure, so I'm waiting to hear back from him too. And then I've sent out notes that I don't, I haven't gotten like interest from these people yet, but I sent out notes and you know asked them if they'd like to join um, to the movement. And now I'm blanking on the rest, but like lots. <laughs> so uh, like Kyle Smith and stuff like that. So we've got some good peeps confirmed, waiting to hear back from some more. And um, we also got Dr. Thema Davis Bryant, who is. Uh, legendary psychologist she got i think most of her education from harvard and also was a uh she spoke to the un about mental health and stuff like that but she specializes in um recovering from trauma caused by sexual violence so she's going to be um speaking during the chapter where i told barry about the sexual assault for the first time and um realized that my coping mechanisms or no is she doing it for the assault the first time? I think so. And then they, I asked another person to come and talk about, um, like, realizing that coping mechanisms are unhealthy and stuff like that. So it's just going to be really cool. And then yesterday I freaked out because I know how cool it's going to be, and I was a little scared about how cool it's going to be, and I didn't know if I could pull it off, but then today feels better. So that's fun. <laughs> Afraid of your own success, huh? Yep, a little bit. <laughs> I was like, oh, sh they all said yes. And then I'm like, and then the what ifs happen. It's like, well, what if the Wi-Fi goes out? Well, what if your computer breaks down? Well, what if you f***ing die before then? And I was just like, hey, anxiety brain, like go to sleep. It's fine. Like it, I'm prepared for all of those situations. And if it happens, I can't really change it anyway. So I'm just going to plan for the best event ever instead of worrying about what could go wrong. How many crappy events have you ever put on? None. Okay. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Williams in the Wild. What you doing? Get ready for an interview with NPR. NPR? Yeah. Like the National Public Radio? Is that what that stands for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those guys. What you guys talking about? Uh, we're talking about the implications of national parks closing on uh, organizations and individuals like hiking my feelings. Excellent. Yeah. Are you going to lay it down? Yeah.